This noon, crews are finishing the work that a fire started demolishing some apartment homes near downtown. Melissa Cole explains why it is a matter of safety. A unique project taking place right here in San Antonio. It could speed up the response to natural disasters. How it could change the way teams send help to those in need. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, former San Antonio Spurs guard and NBA free agent Bryn Forbes taken away in handcuffs. He was arrested in San Antonio on a misdemeanor family violence charge today. A preliminary police report says Forbes was out with a woman when he became upset. That's when police say the pair drove home. And when they got there, the two were involved in an altercation. It became physical. Police say Forbes is accused of hitting that woman several times. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. A little over a week ago after being sentenced 20 years in prison for the 2019 death of his wife, Andre McDonald back in court today. This morning, a hearing held about a tampering with evidence charge that McDonald was given back in 2019, right after his wife, Andreen McDonald, disappeared. We know the judge had a decision to make on that charge when it came to punishment. Eric Hernandez joins us live now from the Justice Center with that choice, Erica. David and Ursula, this hearing was all about a plea deal that Andre McDonald accepted on that tampering with evidence charge. Now, McDonald was brought in to sign the paperwork on that plea deal. Over a week ago, 399 District Court Judge Frank Gostro sentenced McDonald to the maximum 20 years in prison after a jury found him guilty of the lesser charge of manslaughter. During the trial, McDonald testified that he killed his wife in self-defense after she spit on him during an argument about a business she was starting in her name only. Today, Judge Castro had to decide whether that five-year sentence would be stacked or run concurrently with the 20 years. Here's what he decided. Sometimes good people make uh, bad or huge um, mistakes. And um, you had your Air Force major, um, had no criminal history prior. But I also um, hope, I just didn't think of it until I looked at my calendar and I was doing emails. We're 13 days away from when you killed your uh, your wife and mother of your child. And I, I hope you think about that on the 28th of February coming up and, and every day that you're in prison. Um, it's not, tampering's never at 3G, so it's it's going to, uh, parole wise, he's aware of that and stuff. But, okay, I am going to go ahead and uh, stack your sentences, run them consecutive, sentence you to five years, uh, TDC, the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I got to put this for the record going to run after the manslaughter case number two. Now, this plea deal brings an end to the case for the prosecution, but the defense does plan to appeal. Now, coming up later, we will have reaction on this today's hearing from the district attorney, as well as from defense attorney John Comvery. Live at the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's a big question. What caused such a massive fire? The question San Antonio fire investigators are now asking about this two alarm fire that broke out in the 600 block of Baltimore Avenue near I-35, just north of downtown. Alyssa Cole explains the apartment home where these flames were spotted will now need to be torn down. Flames shooting out from this two story apartment home, a fire so dangerous, Roughly 30 crews responding to the scene moving quickly. Inside the 4,300 square foot apartment home, firefighters tried putting out the fire through holes on the first floor, but it wasn't effective. The dangerous structure here with the, the holes in the floor hampered our ability to get in and, and make an offensive attack. That's why we had to go defensive on it. Once crews moved outside, they were able to put out most of the fire by taking an aerial approach. Obviously, it's going to be a extreme, you know, extensive damage to this structure, this older structure here. Very large, very stubborn fire. Family and friends tell us off camera there was a man living inside on the second floor, but they say thankfully he was not inside during the time of the fire. Officials were also able to evacuate people from the rear of the apartment home early on. A few vehicles nearby were damaged by the fire, but no one was injured. The RV did suffer some damage and some of the cars did as well, but we're keeping it from going to the neighboring structures. Investigators are still working to find out how the fire started, but they believe it's likely it started on the lower portion of the home. Because the apartment home is a total loss, city crews are demolishing it for safety purposes. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News.
Let's get outside with live cam. It's 72. It feels like we're about to hit spring until we hit like the rest of the week. It's weird. It's weird. It'll be spring until about midnight tonight. Oh, is that when it ends? You <laughs> warned us though, Justin, that yeah. every day was going to bring a new surprise. Every day is a new adventure. And uh, yes, we've got a cold front coming through tonight. But before that happens, it's going to be warm today. You saw a little bit of blue skies showing up there on live cam. We'll see a lot more blue skies we head into the afternoon, and here's why. Take a look at the satellite picture. You see the clouds are clearing. We had a little bit of fog this morning, and then some of those little clouds, but they are quickly, quickly going away. We're seeing breaks in those clouds here around San Antonio. Still pretty thick off to the east, so Gonzales down to Beeville, you've still got overcast skies, but everyone else now starting to see sun here around San Antonio, and certainly if you're west of town, it's full sun which is resulting in some warm temperatures. 73 right now in Hondo. Carrizo Springs is at 82, 84 in Del Rio. And I think we could see a 90 degree temperature on the map today. It's possible down to the south and west of town. Uh, temperatures here in San Antonio won't be quite that warm. We have a little bit more humidity, which will keep temperatures in check. But I still think we can make it into the low 80s today as these clouds go away. 68 Boulevardi, 68 Bernie Stage, 72 right now in comfort. Here's a look at the case at 12 hour forecast. 78 at 2 o'clock, 80 at 3 p.m. We'll go up to 82 by 4, then we'll fall back down into the 70s. By the time we get to around midnight though, here comes our next front with it a very small chance of a shower, but the bigger story will be some very gusty winds as this front comes through. Again, we think it's between midnight and 2 a.m. The main headlines here, gusts of 40 miles per hour out of the north coming up tomorrow morning. Much cooler, and it will feel very different tomorrow. We'll talk more about those winds and the fire danger that comes along with them coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. A woman will be facing serious charges after dealing with a critical gunshot wound. San Antonio police say she and a man both shot during an early morning gun battle inside a Southtown apartment building. Katrina Weber tells us why police say the woman is not exactly a victim. Police cars swarm the parking lot of this apartment building in the 300 block of West Ceballos, but the crime scene itself is inside. Officers told us two people, a man and woman, shot each other just before three this morning. A report later explained that it happened after the woman kicked in the man's door. It says he told police he reached for his gun because he knew she was armed too. He was wounded in his arm while the woman was shot in her stomach. Both of them, 25 years old, were taken to a hospital with critical wounds. Police kept the area sealed off for hours as they worked to piece it all together. Among the evidence one officer told me he found was a trail of blood that led all through the building and down to the sidewalk. The commotion had neighbors up before the sun. Some of them were driven out by a water leak. Police say a stray bullet from the shootout tore into a neighbor's home and hit a water pipe. No one else was hit by the gunfire. The woman involved in the shooting is facing a charge of aggravated assault. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Nearly a million dollars in federal funding is going to go to a local domestic violence prevention program. Today, Congressman Joaquin Castro announcing $956,662. It's new federal funding. Some of the money is going to go to the Guardian House's Triple P Positive Parenting Program. The organization is going to be able to expand the free parenting and family support system. The Children's Hospital of San Antonio's Center for Miracles is also going to get some of that funding. The center works to provide training and education on identifying and handling possible child abuse cases. First, a local company created medical units to place inside a cargo aircraft, and now they are developing units that can transport items via rockets. Tiffany Huertas takes us to Knight Aerospace in Port San Antonio with a look at this unique project. Imagine a rocket cargo going across the earth and within two hours can deliver humanitarian aid and other means to support natural disasters. That is being designed here at Knight Aerospace, located at Port San Antonio. We received a small business innovation research contract from the United States Air Force to support uh, future aspirations of moving cargo humanitarian aid using rockets. Michael Knight's grandfather started this company that continues to grow. So we're seen as a industry leader in cargo handling systems, cargo movement. Knight Aerospace started in 1992 
and created units to transport high-ranking military officials and others. Today, they're creating these units for medical purposes. This entire module is 100% sealed. This is the second unit they have created for the Royal Canadian Air Force. It's meant to transport any medical situation for the Air Force or the Canadian government or ally nations. Um, it's also being utilized to transport infectious disease patients. Knight says the first unit delivered has already been used in different situations. Successfully moved a family, a Royal Canadian Air Force um, individual and his family from Africa back to Canada. They've used it a lot domestically to transport individuals from hospitals to other hospitals that aren't overcrowded. He is excited for the future of the company. We're moving with the times of different means of transportation with Rocket being the next one. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. The travel of U.S. air travel, a hot topic on Capitol Hill today. The acting director of the FAA is in the hot seat. This comes after a number of safety concerns involving commercial airlines, including several near misses and a computer glitch that grounded flights nationwide last month. ABC's Justin Finch reports the acting director is on Capitol Hill facing some tough questions from senators. The next FAA reauthorization approval. The safety of U.S. air travel topping the agenda at a Senate Commerce Committee hearing this morning after several near misses and a nationwide technical glitch that impacted commercial airlines and thousands of passengers. Complacency has no place in air transportation. Acting FAA Administrator Billy Nolan testifying and addressing last month's no TAM system failure that grounded all U.S. flights for hours. This week, Nolan also announcing the agency is con convening a safety review team to investigate the U.S. aviation system following several near disasters involving passenger planes. We are experiencing the safest period in aviation history, but we do not take that for granted. ABC News hearing from passengers who say they were aboard a United Airlines flight in December that nearly plunged into the Pacific Ocean. And then all of a sudden, I mean, I just felt like my stomach was in my throat. There have been two other close calls at U.S. airports just within the last month. Delta 1943, cancel takeoff plans. At New York's JFK Airport, a Delta plane nearly striking an American Airlines flight that was on the wrong runway. The pilot slamming on the brakes. This could have been the worst aviation disaster in U.S. history. And in Austin, Texas. Southwest abort. FedEx is on the go. A FedEx cargo plane preparing to land, coming within only 100 feet of a Southwest flight full of passengers that was taking off on the same runway. Air safety is built on our being intolerant of any mistake. And the union representing those American Airlines pilots involved in that near miss at JFK Airport say those pilots will now comply with a subpoena from the NTSB to take part in interviews after three past refusals to comply. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. So Justin has talked to the news director and from now on he's going to get paid per weather front. Did you hear that? Wow. <laughs> so he's he got like a huge pay raise. That's, that's all fine and good until the summer and then, then, <laughs> and then, then the doldrums so you, set in. Yeah. Better save your money. <laughs> it, I think it all will even out in the end. Yeah, it could. It could. Uh, yeah, as we look outside, it's warm today. There's uh, quite a bit of cloud cover at the moment, but that's starting to go away and the sun pops out here soon. The aquifer down a tenth of a foot to 638.1 and your pollen count, molds and ash are in the low category. We do have a front headed our way tonight. We'll take a look at the timing on that and what it means for gusty winds coming up tomorrow. This is truly the adage, if you don't like today, wait till tomorrow. Because <laughs> it's going to be totally different. As, today. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. been like that all week long. If you're trying to make plans, you just, yeah. you know, keep a jacket in the car, yep. along yeah. with some flip-flops. Well, you know. You know, it, you'll, you'll have what you need. That's right. And I'll say today's our warm day. I think after today, it gets a little more, you know, in the sense where you can figure out what, what to wear. Today's kind of our, warm, our, our one warm day. And then we get the front tonight and every, everything changes. I want to show you where that front is right now as we look at the current setup. Uh, it's still back over parts of West Texas. Out ahead of it, we've had a lot of moisture. 
uh, pushing into the area. That led to some fog and cloud cover this morning. You can still see that on the visible satellite picture right there. So that's all the result of that moisture surging in out ahead of the system, which happened very rapidly, by the way. If you remember, it was dry yesterday afternoon, and then humidity just jumped up. Uh, in a big way this morning. So here, here's a little closer look at the visible satellite picture and you know, the clouds are slowly eroding here across Bear County. We're starting to see the sun peek through. Give it another couple of hours and I think we'll see quite a bit of sun here around town. As a result, temperatures are starting to jump up. 70 here, 73 New Braunfels, 73 Kennedy with a little more cloud cover there. And then as you get out west where the air is a little drier, and we've got a lot more sun. You're already seeing mid 80s places like Del Rio, where it's 84, 82 in Junction, 82 in Carrizo Springs, right around 70 here in San Antonio. But we're already up to 74 at Stinson, and I think these numbers will jump up pretty rapidly this afternoon. There you see the blue skies right there. There's some more peaks of blue in there and uh, 70 at the airport right now. Southerly winds at 14. Those winds change dramatically by tonight. And by the way, the dew point is at 63. That makes it feel fairly humid out there. Here's the forecast temperature for today. As those clouds go away, we're up to 82 for a high. Some places down to the south and west could be up near 90. Here comes our front. I think it arrives around 1 o'clock or so, 1 a.m. while you're sleeping. Probably brings a shower or two, but nothing you're really going to notice. It's not going to amount to much. The bigger story will be the gusty winds behind it in the cooler temperatures by tomorrow morning 7 a.m. 48 degrees here in San Antonio. But you put that with a north wind, it's going to feel chillier than that and it's going to be fairly blustery uh, through much of the day tomorrow. We only get up to 59 or so here in San Antonio, mid 50s in the hill country, 60s down to the south. So it'll be a much cooler day to put it in simple terms here. 82 today, 59 tomorrow. That is a 23 degree temperature difference thanks to our front tonight. And you see the headline there gusts to 40 miles per hour tomorrow. So let's look at the future cast wind. Five o'clock today, it's breezy, but it's not windy. It's when that front arrives, that the winds really start to howl. And that again happens overnight. 30 mile per hour wind gust at the airport, maybe gusting to 40 in some cases. And by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, I think that's when we'll have our strongest winds. Winds gusting close to 40 all around San Antonio and really for much of the area out of the north. That's the situation where your trash can will blow right down the street if you're not careful. And by the time we get to, say, the lunch hour, winds are starting to come down some, but not much. It's uh, going to take until probably dinner time tomorrow before these winds really start to relax. And then they, they may go uh, pretty light as we get into tomorrow night, which will lead to some chilly temperatures. And oh, by the way, not only do we have gusty winds, we have very low humidity. This is for Del Rio tomorrow, but this is important. These numbers where they're below 20% when we're talking relative humidity, that's when you start to get into a pretty significant fire danger. And that's what we're looking at tomorrow. Here's a look at the fire danger map. And yeah, we do need to be concerned about it here in San Antonio, but it's out west where it gets really bad. You get those gusts to 40, very dry air, and you have extreme fire danger for places like Del Rio and very high fire danger for those east of San Antonio. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. 59 tomorrow, as we said, down to 32 by Friday morning, 56 for high on Friday, 60 Saturday, 73 Sunday, and then we're back in the 80s by the start of next week with another small chance for a shower coming up on Tuesday. We'll be right back. in the middle of the week and that means deeper into the girls playoffs class 5a by district round at alamo convocation center last night jefferson facing harlandale second quarter madison guzman finds kathleen santos puts it up and in 21 9 lead back come the innings though marissa ortez with the hoop for the lay-in part of a five nothing run but jefferson answers back in transition guzman ahead to Amira's Cuellar, she banks it in. Jefferson leads by nine at the half. They go on to win it 61-46. Class 6A by district ground. Johnson taking on East Central. Adamo Heights, good start for the Jags. Addison Iden gathers the pass, goes lefty. That's good for an early three-point lead. Hornets respond. Asia Prudhomme spins, draws contact, gets it to go. Counted and won. Johnson just too good last night, though. Iden finds 
Giselle Johnson wide open for the corner three. That's a 10-3 run they are on. That opened up the game. They go on to win it 64-47. Another great battle in Class 6A. Steele playing Brandeis. Third quarter, Knights start to pull away. Kick out to Adriana Dandy for the three. That gives Steele a commanding 33-23 lead. Brandeis does respond. Rian Forstier with a bounce pass to Mia Ramos. That was a lay-in. That cuts the lead down to eight. Then a few plays later, Ramos comes up with the steal, takes it the other way. Ooh, that, how about that? Little move to lay-in. Broncos trail 33-27. Steel takes over from there. Off the miss, Mia Hammonds is there for the rebound. Put back, Knights are moving on with a 57-46 victory. We know we had, we had a game plan. We had a six-hour game plan. If we knew if we ventured off from it, we weren't going to succeed in what we were planning to do. So we told ourselves to lock in, and we know if we keep on pushing, coming into that, that third quarter, the game's over and we'll be good. All right, marks the second straight season. Steelers advance past the first round. The Knights will next face Austin High School in the area round later on this week. Hey, the Spurs are one loss away from setting a new franchise record losing streak. Ooh, not a record you want. When they fell to Cleveland, they matched a team record with their 13th consecutive loss. Spurs will be facing the Hornets tonight, 6 o'clock. Doug McDermott is questionable with right Achilles soreness. If they lose, that's the new worst losing streak in history. Remember when the rodeo road trip used to mean, Ooh. you know, yeah, a bunch of a wins, winning streak? And, yeah, yeah, bunker down, that bunker humanity, mm, mentality. Not so much. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to save a few bucks, President's Day sales might be music to your ears. We're going to take a look at the products you should keep near and an eye out for. That was the scene in an emotional courtroom hearing. The 19-year-old gunman who killed 10 people in a Buffalo supermarket back in May sat ready to hear his sentence, and then this happened. Victims' families got the chance to speak to Peyton Jenren, and one family member actually rushed the shooter. ABC's Jacqueline Lee reports today Jenren was sentenced to life in prison without parole. No, no, no. Chaos breaking out in the courtroom early on as a man lunges at the shooter, Peyton Gendron, followed by shouts and sobs as deputies restrained him and Gendron was removed from the courtroom for his safety. This comes as the family members of the 10 victims murdered in a racist attack inside this Buffalo supermarket finally get their chance to confront the gunman who killed their loved ones. I will hurt you so bad. You have made me sick. You got my family crying. I miss my sister every day. 19 year old Peyton Gendron admitting to killing 10 innocent people at a top supermarket last May. Gendron even live streaming part of it, motivated by hate and white supremacy. In November, he pleaded guilty to 15 charges, including murder and domestic terror motivated by hate. The first time prosecutors have charged that crime in New York State. It carries a mandatory sentence of life in prison. Do I hate you? No. Do I want you to die? No. I want you to stay alive. I want you to think about this every day of your life. After the victim's families had their say, the convicted killer made a statement and offered an apology. I'm very sorry for stealing the lives of your loved ones. I cannot express how much I regret all the decisions I made leading up to my actions on May 14th. I did a terrible thing that day. I shot and killed people because they were black. Looking back now, I can't believe I actually did it. Some of those who lost loved ones say they don't want to hear it. Others say it won't change anything. She was a beautiful girl. I have been profoundly changed. The blatant racism and calculated planning that went into last summer's shooting rocked the nation. Officials say leading up to the carnage, Gendron visited the market twice to map out his plan. They also discovered a nearly 700-page online diary where he expressed his admiration for past mass shooters. Gendron is still facing more than two dozen federal hate crime charges. He's due in federal court tomorrow. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Buffalo. Now to that campus rampage that left three students dead and five more in critical condition at Michigan State. We are learning more about the victims and the gunman. Overnight students attended a vigil as the community tries to make sense of the unthinkable. Five students still hospitalized in critical condition. 
According to police, the 43-year-old gunman Anthony McCray first opened fire at a classroom building Monday night, killing two. Then he moved to the nearby student union where he killed the third victim. Matt Riddle says his daughter Emma not only survived the MSU mass shooting, but just 14 months ago was nearly a victim in another mass shooting at a high school in Oxford, Michigan. That left four dead and injured seven. Having been through it in Oxford, it helped her understand what she needs to do in these situations. And I don't like that she has those tools. I wish she didn't, but she does. An exact motive is still unclear. Fallout continuing in that train derailment in Ohio. It turns out that there were more toxic chemicals on board than originally were reported. Now people who live in the area are demanding answers since they're being told it is safe to go back home. They don't believe it. Specifically, people in East Palestine have questions about potential lingering contaminants from the massive fire and the hazardous chemicals. Norfolk Southern says it, along with the EPA, completed more 115 in-home air tests and that none have detected any of the substances related to the incident. It says it's conducted more than 400 tests total, yet officials are reporting that 3,500 fish across 12 different species perished in Ohio's waterways. And residents were reporting that their pets, including cats and chickens, suddenly died. Now consumer advocate Erin Brockovich, who fought for the clean groundwater laws in her California town, has stepped in to help. They've been giving misinformation. They don't trust the information that's coming in, and they were scared. Ohio's governor says he understands the town's anger, and tonight there is a town hall meeting in East Palestine. The opioid overdose antidote Narcon could soon be sold over the counter as a nasal spray. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration meeting with advisors to discuss making the nasal spray version of Narcon available without a prescription. Research shows that a wider availability of Narcon could save lives as opioid overdose deaths across the country reach record numbers. The drug company seeking the FDA's approval says it's the over-the-counter nasal spray version of Narcon is designed to be used by people without any medical training. It also says the spray is easier to administer than an injection. Approval could come as early as this year. The added sugar in processed foods could increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. That's according to a study in the UK. Researchers took a look at diet and health data from more than 110,000 people in the United Kingdom. They found that the more so-called free sugars people consumed, the higher their risk of heart disease and stroke. Free sugars include added sugars, but they can also occur naturally in syrups, honey, juice, and purees. Free sugars do not include sugar that occurs naturally in fruits, vegetables, or dairy. Outside with live cam, we touched on it a little while ago. This is kind of when your car becomes your closet. You need several different changes of clothes because you never know what it's going to do day to day. Always different. It's a good idea. Just have it all on hand. Uh, today, we know it's going to be warm and humid already getting there. We're at 73 degrees here in San Antonio, but it's, it's sticky out there, too. I want to show you the temperature difference across the state. Uh, it's 84 right now in Del Rio, one of the warm spots, not only in Texas, but across the country. And you go up to Amarillo where it's 46, almost a 40 degree temperature difference thanks to a frontal boundary that will be making its way towards our neck of the woods here later tonight. We're up to 70, although it's probably a little bit above that now that the sun is trying to pop out. That front is uh, still out across parts of West Texas, but it'll quickly make its way uh, towards us. Still some lingering clouds. Those are beginning to break up. So again, the sun is out. And as we go outside for you once again, 70 at the airport at last report. Dew point is at 63, so that's a high number. With southerly winds at 14 miles per hour, it will be a breezy afternoon. Here's a case at 12 hour forecast. More sun by 3 o'clock. We jump all the way up to 82. Uh, that's our high temperature. 79 at 6 o'clock, 76 at 7 p.m. still feels great. But by the time we get to midnight and thereafter, front comes through, starts to cool down, and it gets very windy. Uh, again, you see the temperature difference here across the state. We're in for some cooler weather tomorrow. Some of that uh, cooler uh, air drops in and we get those gusty winds. Maybe gusty up to 40 miles per hour coming up tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about those winds and what you can expect the rest of the work week coming up in just a bit. Guys. I just look forward to that. The death toll has now topped 41,000 after that earthquake in Turkey. ABC's James Longman reports miracle survivors are still being found in that rubble.
The staggering death toll climbing after Turkey and Syria's catastrophic earthquake. More than nine days on, rescuers and volunteers are still searching for survivors trapped under the rubble. And incredibly, among the devastation, there are still glimmers of hope. This morning, a 42-year-old woman was pulled from the rubble after 222 hours. Rescuers cheering. Here, a 77-year-old man was rescued after 212 hours and two brothers trapped nearly 200 hours. While experts say it's extremely rare to survive after this much time, more discoveries are possible. About like 15, 16 days, human can uh, live in about like 20 days. And this morning, investigators are looking for answers. Now, the rescue operation is still ongoing, but people are now really keen to find answers to why this happened. And there's a team here taking samples of the concrete to find out if these buildings were constructed to code. But as the death toll mounts, so does the humanitarian crisis. Millions of people are now displaced in freezing conditions, living in tents like these. Marwan came to Turkey 10 years ago, fleeing the war in Syria. His home, once a place of refuge, is now a pile of rubble. His aunt was killed right in front of him. When you look at this, what are you feeling? There's no words to explain what happened and what I feel. Now this tent is all he has, sharing it with six family members, their lives yet again uprooted, but refusing to give up hope. Retailers hoping to entice customers with another round of sales this month. What items? You'll see the deepest discounts this President's Day.